Page. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Kinesiology, and I'm also the director of the Wisconsin Institute for Science Education and Community Engagement, otherwise known as WIS Science. And I'm here to share my experience using Canvas in a new course that we launched um, last summer very in a very small way and then really launched um, this last fall, and it's Kinesiology 235, uh, which is a human health uh, and physiology course. So it's an elementary level course. Um, and we had, last summer we only had like seven students in the class because we just were like, okay, let's just do it and let's try it this summer. Um, and then last fall we had like 95 students in the class. Um, we teach it in the Whistle classroom in College Library. Um, we did teach it last summer in Wentz in the Whistle space. So all instructors in the course, myself included, are new to teaching in that space. So we wanted to think a lot about how we could take advantage of what was available there. Uh, because it was a new course, we, it got automatically assigned to Canvas. So we were like, okay, I guess we're gonna use Canvas. So <laughs> we just went along with the program. Um, and unfortunately, the one of our teaching assistants, Giuseppe, has really helped us out a lot in figuring out how to use Canvas. We were really familiar with Learning UW, and so he couldn't be here today, but he has set up a lot of the things that we're using in there. But what I'm gonna show you today around the Google Collaborate, um, actually myself and my co-instructors have mostly been working in that space, and so that'll probably be obvious. So um, if, if I can just back up a little bit, um, so, you know, John gave me these four great questions. What did I want to do, um, and what did I try, what happened, and what would I do differently next time? So the whole reason, um, what I'm going to show you, the whole reason we did this was, uh, well, there were a couple of reasons. I would say the main one was to try to get the students to read before they came to class <laughs> and be ready. It was like, what? Yeah, we know we all, right? So I had, for a long time, used what I call learning guides. And these were, um, and we do them by Oregon system in this class, so you'll see that. But they lay out uh, the learning objectives for that system. Um, they, and we've done this in, uh, by class time and by system before. So the intellectual topic is like the cardiovascular system. So there'd be a learning guide for that. Um, so it lays out the students' learning objectives, it lays out key terms and concepts, and then it lays out a series of questions that essentially are the key things that we want them to know based on the reading that we've assigned. Um, and I always tell the students, you know, you can go anywhere you want to find the answers to these questions. Um, and this book is not the only place to go, but the book is kind of the bar, the level of information is there. Um, so we, we were using these from the very get-go in the class. In the first two semesters, um, we, did, we didn't require them to turn them in. Um, so we said you should do this before you come to class. So as you might imagine, you know, they didn't really do them the way we wanted them to. So we thought this spring we were gonna try to um, require them to turn them in. And then we wanted to make sure that we engaged them with that material in a meaningful way when they came into the class. Um, so the other thing that happened that motivated this uh, is that in the fall in particular, when we had freshmen in the class, we had about 60% of our students were first year, first semester students. And they were just distraught that we didn't provide a key. They wanted the answer key. And I kept saying, these questions are right out of your book. You're sitting in tables, and have you checked with your neighbor to see what they got? And you're like, well, no, it will only be true if you say it. <laughs> so another uh, motivation for doing what I'm going to show you is that we wanted to provide them with the key, but we didn't want to just hand them a key. We wanted them to make the key, and we wanted to develop their confidence and self-efficacy around being able to feel good about the answers that they found and be able to judge whether they were key-worthy, if you will. So um, these are the... These are the main reasons we went to this. So we still, the learning guides became due individually before they came in, they had to submit something. And then when they come in, the first thing they do is they're sitting in tables of like six, and um, they actually have to create the key to the learning guide. So I'm gonna show you a learning guide, and this is obviously the instructor's view in here. Um, so 
you go into the collaborations if you haven't used this before and you see many learning guides here. <laughs> so we post the learning guide about a weekish before and they download it as a Word file and they can type in all their answers and submit it for credit. And those aren't graded, we're just making sure that they're making an effort when they come in. Um, so this was in the room and I can show you this one. Um, and then we put the learning guide, I think, there it is. Okay, so then we put it up on, the, on a Google Doc that they can all see when they come into class. And so you can see this is, this is kind of a long one. We spend a considerable amount of time on the nervous system. And they, these are all the key terms and concepts. So if you've ever taken science classes, you know that they can have their own vocabulary. And so this class serves both prospective majors and non-majors. So I've had philosophy majors and computer science majors in here. So just making sure we all know what the vocab is is really important. So what you see is this is a key version and the students have worked together um, in their groups to key this. So these are all the key terms and concepts. It's a lot. And these are the questions. So they can grab and insert diagrams in their key. I'll we'll scroll all the way down. Um, here's me making a comment. So after they do this, and it takes them, I thought when we first did this, I thought, oh man, I'm gonna have to like dedicate a whole class for them to pull this key together. Now they get, in 10 minutes, they got it made. I can't believe how fast they are. Um, so Jen, put, you put all of the keywords. I wrote the keywords in, they wrote the definitions. Okay. <clears throat> we talk a lot, you know, those, we also talk at the beginning about, I, I talk about what I call smart cards instead of flash cards. Like, you can give me the definition of this thing, but why, why is it important to the system we're talking about? How are you going to use it? What does it have to do with what we learned last week? What does it have to do with what we're going to learn next week? Like, to try to get some context. So, um, one of the challenges in the life sciences is, is to get students to stop thinking about just memorizing a bunch of facts and how do I use this? And I always say to them, there's so many things that we could ask you to learn and we've narrowed it down in this learning guide. So if you see something on here, you know that it's important. And if you can't articulate why you think it's important, then you really didn't get it. Um, so this is, when they come in, this is at the end of the document, and the document's not that long. After they put in all their answers, then it gets really long. So this is the groups, um, and these are the tables they sit at. And so table one comes in and they say, okay, key terms and concepts, we have number 46 to 53. And so it's their responsibility to key those terms, and it's their responsibility to write the key for questions 7, 15, and 23, and so on. So every group isn't doing it. But they're all working in this document simultaneously, so they have their computers open and they're putting in their answers. Um, so I naively thought this would be really loud and they would be talking and it would be great. Um, and they were really quiet, patiently. <laughs> and I said, Well, did you talk about that one? Yeah. <laughs> they would just say, Okay, you do number five, you do number 11, and you do number 20. And what I really wanted was them to say, What'd you get for number five? Let's talk about how we can put the best answer possible in there. And we're still struggling with that. They really just want to come in and do this. The other challenges we've had is that um, you'll notice I'm the only one who, who like put any comments in here. And so we want them to look at other groups' answers and make comments or say, wait a minute, that's not that's different from what I have. And they, we have found them to be very reluctant to do that. And I've had some students say, well, it says who you are when you put a comment in, so I don't want to put a comment in, because they'll know that I was like digging on their answer, or I didn't like their answer. Right, so there was, there's like this uh, reluctance to be critical of each other. Now, on the back side of that, they're also really frustrated. This is what they used to study for their exams. So they're really, unhappy when they don't have good answers on this because they feel like, well, if I study the wrong thing, then you should just give me the points for that question on the test. So we've, we're having lots of conversations about how, well, it's our collective responsibility to make sure that what we have on our key is right, right? We gotta check each other. And I, we go in after each of these, the instructors do, we make comments and we try to, to just answer it, but we try to sometimes we'll correct things, but 
just to try to get them to go back in. So just last week, my, my partner in crime here, Maureen Shields, who's teaching with me this uh, semester, she was really frustrated because she wrote some comments and the groups didn't go back in and do anything. And so, um, what is today, Monday? So last Thursday, she says, all right, here's the deal. If you guys don't come in and, and like work on your answers, just make a good faith effort, and you got 10 minutes right now, we're gonna just spend time, then you need to present on that topic next Thursday to the entire class. Boy, they were on. <laughs> so, and they were asking questions. She's like, I'm here, I'm here. I wanna help you. You know, you need to help with each other. So, I don't know if we'll keep doing something like that, but um, the big challenges for us are getting them to talk and work together on this. Um, and getting them to trust their answers, which I think is linked to being critical of other students' answers. Um, so, anyway, I think, that, did I cover all your questions, Jim? This is, um, what do you do next time? Um, oh, yeah, so another thing I'd like to incorporate in this class are, are peer leaders. And so, in addition to encouraging discussion while they're doing this activity, we also have group activities like problem solving activities that they do together when they're in class. And quite frankly, one of the reasons we want them to get what, what is pretty basic information on these learning guides down before they come, so we have time to try to apply it together. Um, and physiology just isn't physiology if you're not applying it, if there's not a mechanism behind it, you know. Like if I cut this, what happens over there? That's, but if the first time they try to do that is on the test, if they just get blown out of the water. So we're trying to create space when we're with them in class to be able to work on those things together. So we also find when we give them a problem, like okay, here's the problem of the day, and this person comes, they have this disease, or they have this you know, protein that's not expressed right, or whatever it is. Now try to predict what will happen to the basic physiology that so there are problems like that. Um, they, they, you know, sit like this. They don't talk too much to each other. Um, and it's really hard to get discussion going. So we're hoping that these, if we introduce some peer facilitators who are trained in trying to get people to talk, that we might, and, and just plop one at each of these tables, that we might be able to get some discussion going. Um, so that's, we're thinking about doing that, um, both for getting them to talk during the, Google Doc part, but also getting the talk just during the, the regular um, group problems part. When you and for